Hey guys, so today I'm going to be looking at keyboard navigation in the text editor that I've been working on. But before we get to that, I just want to cover off a small issue with the caret placement as we had it in the last video. So as you can probably remember, the caret position is stored as a code point index from the top of the document, which is fine and works in most of the cases. However, there's actually two ways to position the caret if you think about it. So when the caret is here, for example, the caret graphically can be placed either to the left of the character after the insertion point, or it can be placed to the right of the character before the insertion point. Now, obviously, for normal left to right text, most of the time this is going to give exactly the same position. But one place where it doesn't is at the end of a line, such as here. So this code point index and this code point index are both exactly the same. And if I could, if I could actually type into this now, you would see that typing uh, produces the same result at either position. The only difference is graphically where it's shown. Now, normally um, it doesn't matter, as I said, because in either case it will give the same caret position. But it's important to be able to put the caret at the end of the line here for cases where you click here. It would be weird if the caret came up here. And similarly, now that we've got keyboard navigation, pressing the end key should move it to the end of the line and not to the start of the next line. So the way I've handled this is I've introduced uh, a new flag called caret position, alt caret position. And you'll see that this flag is uh, passed through everywhere that caret positioning information is used. So for example, the hit test result that's returned from the hit test method includes this alt caret position, the move caret function takes an alt caret position, the get caret info function, etc. It passes through all the way. And it means exactly what I just said. It means to place it at its alternate position when it has two positions. Okay, so that's just a small issue that I need to fix up from the, the previous video. Um, so let's move on to uh, keyboard navigation. And before we look at the code, there's one behavior that I need to explain uh, so the code will make sense. And that's to do with moving the caret vertically. So when I press the down arrow here, what's actually happening is it's taking the X coordinate of the caret here and hit testing the next line to figure out where the caret should be placed, okay? What's less obvious is that as you continue to move down, the same X coordinate as the original caret position is used for the hit testing. In other words, when I go from here to here and now from here down another line, it'll be using the X coordinate from here, not from here when I move to the next line. Now, the reason this is important is for when you're past the end of another line. So for example here, when I press up, it moves back to here because that's the closest code point we can get for that line. But when I press down again, it moves back to where it was. So if you compare me clicking here, pressing down, it moves down below. Whereas if I come from here, move up and back down, it comes back to where it was. So what, what's effectively happening here is whenever you start vertical movement, it captures an X coordinate, which it uses for all subsequent vertical movement hit testing. And then once you move horizontally again, it cancels that captured X coordinate. So there's an invisible line through here, if you like. It's used for hit testing as I move up and down. And I've called that line, for want of a better term, the ghost X coordinate. So you'll see in the code we're about to look at that there's a, a variable called the ghost coordinate. And that's what I'm referring to here. Okay, so let's have a look at the code. We'll start with the uh, text document. It has a new method here called navigate. It takes a caret position, which is a new structure, which has essentially those three properties we were just talking about. The code point index of the caret, whether it's at the alternate position or not, and this ghost x coordinate. Okay, it takes a navigation kind, which is one of the various keyboard navigation uh, directions and amounts, so character left, line up, line down, etc. And it takes a page size. So when we're doing page up and down operations, it needs to know how, how big the page is so it knows how far to move. 
Now the way I've structured this function is it's essentially a big switch statement at the top and then a couple of local functions down below. So I like this approach because it saves having to pass all, the, pass all these parameters to these helper functions. So it's a switch statement and a bunch of uh, helper functions. Before we go through those, let's just have a look at how this is actually integrated into the view. So you can see here, this is uh, back in GUI kit and this is the keyboard event handler. And essentially all it's doing is it's mapping key combinations onto these navigation kinds. Okay, and then we call this function down here, which does the actual work. So to just quickly go through this, the extend flag is true when the shift key is set. And then there's a bit of special behavior here, which is related to moving the caret from a selection range. So just to explain what I'm talking about here, it's possible to have a selection range that either goes left to right with the caret at the end here, or from right to left with the caret at the start. And when you do a keyboard navigation from a selection like this, it always moves from the end of the selection in the direction of the movement. So for example, when you move left, it moves from this end of the selection. When you move right, it moves from this end selection. And what I mean by left with navigation is left, up, line, home, document, home, line, home, anything in this direction, anything in this direction or down moves from this end of the selection. And then the other slight tweak is when it's just character left or character right from a selection like this, the caret doesn't actually move unless it's moving to the other end of the selection. So it doesn't move beyond. So for example, if I press left now, the caret won't move to here. So just to show that, it just cancels the selection down. If I was to move right, it just moves the selection to the other end. Okay, so that's a subtle behavior that we need to get right here. And that's what this code is doing. So all it's doing is it's looking at the direction of the selection. It's looking at the direction of the navigation. And if they're different, it swaps the start and end selection. And then if it's a character left or a character right, we switch down to navigation kind of none. Again, this only happens if we have a selection and we're not extending that selection. Okay. We then just create a new caret position from our member variables, passing through the ghost coordinate, the alt flag, and the selection index. And we call the navigate function, passing our visible bounds height for the page size. And then we move the caret using the results. Okay, we get back a code point index and an alt position. The extend flag is from the shift check up here. And then finally, we store the ghost x coordinate. The reason we do this after the move caret is because move caret actually nulls this out in case the caret was moved by a mouse click, for example. So we only want to maintain this across uh, keyboard navigation when the navigate function actually returns it. Okay, so back to text document. These functions, I'll just run through them pretty quickly. So first of all, character left, character right, and word left and word right is exactly the same logic. It's just using a different set of indices within the paragraph. So caret indices is all the positions in a paragraph where the caret can be placed. And word boundary indices are the indices of the first character of each word in the paragraph. So this function is used by character and word left and right. We look up the paragraph, we get the indices using this callback to get either one of those collections. We do a binary search, a bit of fiddling around here with the results from the search to figure out exactly uh, which index in that list we need to go to. And then if we are moving to the previous paragraph, we just get to the move to the end of the previous paragraph. If we're moving to the next paragraph, we move to the start of that. Otherwise, we just create a caret position on the index that we're mapped to. Okay, navigate line is for line up and down. In this case, we're getting the paragraph. We're doing uh, calling get caret info to get um, Two, two things about the current position. First is which line number it's on, and the second is the caret x coordinate. So if we've got a ghost x coordinate, we use it. Otherwise, we use the current starting position of the caret as it is. We then work out which line we're moving to. A bit of bounce checking here to check for the top and bottom of the document and moving to next and previous paragraphs. And then we just hit test the line using the x coordinate that we determined above. 
and then we return the ghost x coordinate so that it's reused for the next uh, vertical navigation. Line end is for line home and end. Um, there's a new property on the paragraph called line indices, which return actually all of these properties are new. So just to quickly show that, you can see we've now got carrot indices, word boundary indices, and line indices. And on the text paragraph, they all map directly through to the text block. Okay, so back to text document. So line indices just returns the index of the first character of each line in the paragraph. And what we do is for line home, we move to the, the line index of the start of the line. For line end, we move to the line, end, line index of the start of the next line, but we set the alt position flag to true so the caret appears at the end of the line rather than at the beginning of the next line. And navigate page up and down, we're just getting the current position of the caret. We do the same x coordinate manipulation with the ghost x coordinate if supplied, and then we just hit test at either the page size before or page size after, and create a caret position from it. Okay, so that's keyboard navigation. You can see it's all working um, home end, document home, document end, word left, word right. They work with selections, line up, line down, etc. Okay, so that's all working. For the next video, I'll be looking at scrolling along with a couple of mouse navigations that aren't quite right. So from, for example, you should be able to double click to select a word or click in the margin to select a line. So clicking here should select a line immediately. Like that. Okay, um, that'll be in the next video. I hope you're enjoying these. Let me know if you've got any feedback. Twitter is the best place at Top 10 Software. Okay, thanks guys. Bye.